Poets, poets, that's what we're here to see, poets, isn't it? We're here to see poets. Hey! Good, just sit, make your bloody minds up, come on. <laughs> we're here to see some poetry, aren't we? Yes. <laughs> Good, join in, join in, please do join in. Yes, otherwise you might as well be going and seeing something you've got to pay for. Ladies <laughs> and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, Miss Jan Windle. Afternoon. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm just going to do straight poetry. Um, but some, sometimes I just have to let off a bit of steam. Um, this is the sad story of someone I used to know, Michael, who was a habitual flirt. Michael was an awful flirt. His charm was legendary. It hurt his steady girlfriend when she saw the way he always hoped to score. One night, as Mike was chatting up a girl called Anna, whose bra cup was 32, a double D, his girlfriend told him, Don't you see? If you go on, my plan is this. I'll have to shoot you. I won't miss. But Michael said, You won't, you know. You really love me, don't you know? And carried on to flirt some more. His girlfriend, feeling very sore, like Cupid, took a bow and arrow, aimed, shot, and his escape was narrow. Her shot did not go through his heart, but rather lower, it did smart. And now his voice is quite high-pitched. His girls now seeing Anna, bitch, says Michael, how on earth was I to know that both the girls were by? And the moral of that is, a bitch in the hand is worth two birds in each other's bushes. Oh. <laughs> uh, There's a little poem called Domestic Archaeology. Two old pennies, stick of gum, fingerless glove without a thumb, newspaper cutting of Charles and Die, piece of toast, Jack's glass eye, rabbit's paw, plastic ring, une unidentifiable thing. Furry thong, fluffy toy, card that says that it's a boy. Shopping list from 86, don't forget the Weetabix. Skeleton of the guinea pig, lock of hair from grandma's wig. Sweetie wrapper, dad's false teeth. Postcard sent from Cowden Beef. Sticky toffee, chicken feathers, bits of pizza stuck together. One of Kevin's used condoms, granddad's medal from the Somme down the back of our settee, domestic archaeology. Now down here, on small camera that takes videos, is my lover Donal. And we've been together for a few years now, and he's very good at giving presents. The first present he ever gave me was a book. He's very fond of books. Um, it was a pop-up book, because he's very fond of pop-up books too. And the title was The Karma Sutra. So it was a very nice present, and I wrote a poem about it. You gave me the Karma Sutra. The pop-up edition, with full chance for reader participation and plenty of tabs to pull. There are pictures of bendy brown beauties dressed in scanty but elegant clothes who show no resistance to smiling insistence by amorous Indian bows. You gave me the Kama Sutra, pop-up version. It's so realistic. The men all have cute little lingams, and there's tabs so the reader can swing them. And the ladies are kissed. Not a square inch is missed, from their yoni right down to their wiggly toes. You gave me the Kama Sutra. Moving pictures to show what to do, and lots of advice how to make love feel nice. And you popped up like you always do. You gave me the Kama Sutra, and I know that we have a fine future. The practice of loving depends on the moving of all body parts above all the heart. And that's how I know that I suit you. And one more. Uh, since I've met Donal, I've been going around with much younger people than myself 
And um, I found a little bit of prejudice when we have been very much in love for some time. And we sometimes write poems about each other which are just a little bit, you know, feeling. Um, and there's been a bit of prejudice about that. So I wrote this poem. It's called Over Age Sex. It's disgusting. It's obscene. And it shouldn't be allowed. It's perverted. It's ex embarrassing and wicked. And if you have to do it, please don't mention it out loud. We don't want to know just when and where you did it. It's different if you're young and you tell about the fun that you had last night in someone else's bed or how you licked her thingy <laughs> and how she got all clingy and how your thing was iron, how she wailed in ecstasy, how she melted at your touch or being more discreet, how you fell down at her feet and told her that you loved her and you wanted her so much. Yes, if you're under 30, it's all right to write quite dirty and tell the world about your private sex life. Even when you're pushing 40, you can still be fairly naughty. But at 50, some will tell you, stop. You should be getting ready for the afterlife. In bed as well as out, we intend to go on having sex and fun together. Old arms still can intertwine. We have done it. We still do it. And our erotic loving will go on and keep us happy until we are 99. So I, do, I hope we don't offend when we let you visualize our aging bodies locked in flagrante delicto. Sex won't vaporize or grow old when cold when you grow old. And love is never just a simple marriage of two minds. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Jan Winkle. Now, special treat for everybody out there. Special treat just arrived.